Hey everybody, Jim here once again with another knife overview. This time I'm going to be looking at something uh, very, very special to me. This is actually going to be a prototype on a model that Mikkel Willemson is going to be releasing in the next couple of months. Uh, he has called it the Maddox. I don't know if it's Maddox or Maddox because the way he spells it is capital M A D capital D O X. So I'm not sure where the inflection lies, but again, I have the typical American tongue and we can pretty much screw up anything in any language. So, uh, Mikkel, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing it, but I'm going to stick with Maddox just because it seems a little bit easier. Uh, first off, this thing is a freaking beast. It's a monstrously huge knife. And just to give it a quick comparison against what I always use for size comparison is uh, my large Sabenzas and the Yum Num Zons. It's... It doesn't seem that much bigger in this respect. Let me kind of line it up this way and you'll get a much better idea. Lengthwise, a little bit bigger. You certainly see that, but look how freaking chunky that knife is. Not only chunky in its height, but the thickness. This thing is an absolute monster. When you get them open, that's where you're really going to see the difference. Lay that out there, give that a little flip, and there's that just ginormous, ginormous blade. I also love the blade profile, the slight cant that it's got too. I'm not huge on canted blades. As a matter of fact, I'm having uh, an amazing knife built for me right now uh, by Chris Martin at Phantom Steelworks. And one of the ones I was looking at was a Skinwalker, and it's got a huge cant to it. Uh, it's almost like the, the Karen bit that he makes. And I went, nah, I'm not really that big of a fan of that much of a cant. But a little bit, and I'll show you why in a little bit. It's a really, it's an interesting feel in the hand. So taking something standard, a slab-sided Sabenza out of the picture, the same with the Yum Nums on, take another big knife, for example, and another flipper. And I love comparing these two because they're so close, nearly identical in their length. But it, this just looks so much more dominating. And you get it put it next to something that's obviously a lot dressier, like a Brian Tai, the Tycoon Flipper, and uh, still my, I think my current favorite knife, uh, my Yuna, my Yuna Hard 2. Absolutely love that knife. And you see the size differences. Even the Yuna with its really large belly in the blade is still really no comparison uh, to this Willemson. It's, it's insane. It's, it's a freaking monster. Now, one of the other things I want to show you while I have all of these out, you know, you're always going to have that flipper in your collection that doesn't quite flip. That was the one thing when I did the review uh, on this absolutely fantastic knife was the one nitpick that I had is you had to throw wrist action into it. So there's a little bit of work that goes into having to use that knife. As we all know, with the Todd Bag Bodega, whether you own one or you, you definitely know somebody that owns one, it is absolutely effortless. You just simply tap it and it opens right up. With the Brian Ty, this was before he started working with the IKBS bearings. So it's not 100% always going to fly open that quickly. Uh, but it does a really good job because he makes a very silky smooth kind of knife. With this knife, and again partially attributed to the fact that it's a prototype. And partially because this thing is... In a world of elegant, beautiful, tactical knives, this is like a freaking battle axe. I mean, this is really, it's, it's meant to bludgeon you with one side and, and slice you open with the other. It just looks like a, something that's evil, wicked, mean, and nasty. If you just flick it, almost every time you're going to get it to fly open. Every now and then, though, you know, it's a, it was a little bit slower that time, but it still wanted to do it. But you give it a little bit of, of wrist action. And this monstrously heavy blade is going to fly open. And I think the only issue with it is the detent. It's got a very, very light detent. As a matter of fact, if I really just swing my wrist, the weight of the blade will open it up from the handle. But again, that's not something I would expect in the production pieces. Now, what makes this a bit different is you'll notice it's not made with any of the, the really exotic materials that Mikel usually uses. There's no Timascus. There's no... Uh, uh, you know, nothing crazy in here. You do have a titanium liner, 
and you, it feels really nice. That titanium liner is very, very smooth and feels great. And the rest of it really is G10, sculpted and stylized, but still G10. And the reason behind that is the production model of this knife, you're going to be able to replace the scales. He's going to be offering different scales. And I don't really want to get into pricing. He's kind of speculated as what the pricing would be, like $25 or so per scale. And then he would be doing like a discount if he bought four or five. Uh, but who knows? Between now and then, that pricing could change. So I don't want to get your hopes up too high. Uh, mine being the prototype, I, I got all excited when I ordered. I'm like, oh, yeah, and how about making up this scale and that scale? He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. this is the prototype. And the way I've built this one, it's not going to accept that same interchangeability. <laughs> I'm not really a, a, a fan of this overall color, but I'm going to live with it because I have, you know, I have a marked prototype. There's only one of these, period. There, nobody else is ever going to have this knife unless I give it or sell it to them, period. So I'll deal with this. I've actually grown to like it a lot more since the day I got it. And it's really cool the way that your hand fits into it, the way that he's cut it. It's a, it's a really, like I said, it's a different feel in the hand. Uh, here are some more of the uh, the details of it here. Urban Tactical, IKBS. So he is using uh, the IKBS system in the pivot, which I think without that, it would be pretty much impossible to flip this thing open the way it's built. I love the blade. I love his complex grinds. That's one of the reasons I've always admired his work and always wanted to own one of his knives. The way that he does his blades, it really, I mean, there, when he started doing this kind of stuff, not a lot of people were. So now you see a lot of people kind of, I don't want to say biting his style or anything like that, but there's a lot of people right now that are doing this type of thing. And he was really one of the first guys that I remember seeing doing really complex grinds. And in, you know, in some ways, stuff like this, it's purely decorative. It has serves no functional purpose that I'm aware of, but it sure as hell looks good. <laughs> And what he's done here is you've got a satin finish on the flats, and then he's done that dark tumble on all the grinds, which is another thing I love about what he does. The last knife I was going to buy uh, that he manufactured, it was a limited edition run of 10 per color that he did for Blade HQ. It was called the Frankie, and, and actually they still have a few of the Frankies left. And that was the first time I had seen this being done to this degree, and I thought it was the coolest looking thing ever. And then once he and I... Uh, started talking and chatting and, and goofing off and whatnot. Uh, and, and I talked to him about this exact knife. And he says, yeah, if you want the prototype, I'll sell it to you. And I'm like, well, hell yeah, why wouldn't I want a prototype? But I will tell you this, when the model actually comes out, what makes this interesting is why you're not seeing those exotic materials is because this is going to be a semi-production knife. So instead of having to buy a full-blown custom for seven, eight, nine hundred dollars and more, which is typically what you're going to spend on any of the Willemsons. You're going to be able to get this. I believe he quoted a price on his Facebook page of about four hundred dollars. Now, when you realize the level of manufacturing that went into this knife, four hundred dollars is kind of an insanely low price. And certainly not a price uh, that I would have ever, ever, ever expected to pay for something like this. Obviously, I didn't. I paid a hell of a lot more because it's the prototype. You're always going to do that. And hopefully it's going to hold that value. But I know when he starts producing these, I'm going to end up buying one that's for more of a daily carry and one that I can change out my scales. And I don't know what he's going to be doing, if it's all just going to be Micarta or G10 or if he's going to start doing some cool carbon fiber things, uh, Mokutai and stuff like that. I have no idea. But as, uh, as it stands for right now, I am up for pretty much anything that he's going to make. But the only downside to it is, and, and, and it could be said for a lot of his knives, it's freaking huge. For somebody like me, I leave a dedicated pocket for my knives. I don't carry anything else in my pocket. It's not that big of a deal. But if I had to carry other stuff in there, there wouldn't be any room. This thing is just massive. Does he make bigger knives? Oh, hell yeah. Go take a look at his Facebook page if you don't think so. Uh, he makes some real monsters. But the thing is, they're done with such style. They're done so cool, and they look like 
just rugged, like I said, like a rugged battle axe. This is not a knife made of finesse and flair. This is not, you know, like having my Damascus blade Sebenza. You know, this is one type of knife. This is uh, entirely another. And I really have never owned anything that's, that's going to quite compare. You know, this is going to be in that league of maybe, and I, I don't want to say exactly because what I'm about to rattle off are much more tactical knives than this particular example, but maybe something more like a, um, oh, geez, like a Medford, those Medford Praetorians. You know, it's, it's, I'm not comparing the style, but just the massive size of it. And that's becoming quite the popular thing right now. The good thing is it's really, really lightweight. The majority of your weight is going to be in that blade. All this is is G10 and some titanium. Titanium clip, titanium uh, liner lock. So it's really comfortable to carry as far as weight goes. And, I mean, you could see how easy that IKBS works. It's very smooth. It is glass smooth. Like I said, if I were to change... Well, okay, okay, I guess change two things. Change one thing is be able to change that. But the main thing I would change is have a little bit of a stronger detent. But again, this is the one that he's been knocking around, banging out, banging around, taking his measurements off of. He's probably flipped this thing 10,000 times before he started going into the production pieces. So I would be very, very certain that by the time the production pieces come out, that detent's going to be a lot stronger. And you're really going to be able to whip that out with some serious authority. But uh, anyway, this is the very first time I've ever owned one of Mikhail Willemson's knives. It will not be the last. As a matter of fact, he and I just started talking this weekend about a custom design he's going to be doing for me on a hand-built custom. Can't wait to see what he's going to do with that beast. And I see myself owning a lot more just based off of what I've seen him do on this new Maddox. So keep your eyes out because when the uh, semi-production pieces come out, you are going to want to get your hands on one. And at the very small price that he's going to be charging for them, I'd say it's going to absolutely be worth it. So there's your last look. Damn, I got to tell you, the more I look at it, the sexier I think it is. I may have to have a whole collection of these damn things. Anyway, good luck. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask.